I would now like to call upon um, Ana Belen Sanchez, who is joining all of us from Madrid, Spain. Um, I would like to give her the floor. Anna is a green job specialist from the United Nations International Labour Organizations, and she's going to provide some remarks on labour as it relates to the circular economy. So to me, Gwech, Anna, for your time, we're very honoured and grateful that uh, you can join us. As you stated earlier before the session opened, that uh, you have quite a bit of snow in your territories this morning, as do we here in uh, Northern Ontario, not as much as we're used to having, but at least we can still celebrate these winter seasons. So I will pass the floor to you and I look forward to hearing your presentation. Naha miigwech. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the invitation. And yeah, as you said, we are enjoying the, the snow at this part of the world. We are not used to that. So everything is a little bit unusual. Let, let's put it like that. Um, so my presentation is going to present uh, how is the relation between this issue of the circular economy and how this is related to green jobs that many of the previous speakers have referred to that and this concept of just transition that uh, at the ILO we, we have been uh, working on and defending for a number of years already. So first of all, let me talk about the ILO. Uh, the ILO is the International Labour Organization. We are part of the United, United Nations system but we are very unique because we are the only tripartite agency of the UN. What does it mean? Oh, that means that we, uh, our constituents, as we call them, uh, are governments, employers, and workers, and, and they, the three of them, work together to reach uh, consensus. So all decisions and all of our uh, work um, are based on, on social dialogue, which is uh, when governments, employers, so the private sector workers, so the labor unions, work together and, and reach agreements. We have our main goal, which is uh, establish labor standards at the global level, formulate policies and development programs to promote what we call decent work for all, for women, for men, for urban economies, for rural economies, for migrant population, for indigenous people, for ex absolutely everybody. So the main objectives of the ILO are, that's our definition of decent work, promote labor rights, promote decent work opportunities, improve social protection, because still many people in the world don't have any access to uh, social security, to health services, for example, to pension, to unemployment benefits in Latin America and the Caribbean, for, for you to have an idea that it's about half of the working population. So half of them don't have any access to any, any of the areas that I have mentioned. Uh, and strengthen social dialogue. So this is uh, about us. And now my presentation is gonna uh, address this issue. I would like to explain a little bit how is the uh, nature and the scale of the impacts of decent work and circular economy uh, so before uh, going into a little bit more um, discussion about that, let me explain what is the definition of green jobs that we are the ILO gives. Uh, green jobs, first of all, should be decent jobs. So this is particularly important for us because no, we can't uh, expect that any job that is created in any of the environmental, I mean, as a result of any of the environmental policy that I'm gonna na name now, can be called as green jobs. They need to be also decent jobs. Um, those are jobs which provide decent wages uh, that allow workers to, to pay for themselves and for, for uh, the families' uh, needs, safe working conditions, so no accidents, no illness at work, social protection, again, pensions and employment benefits, health services, etc promote and respect social dialogue and workers' rights. This is uh, very important because still in, in some countries of the world, uh, there is no right, uh, th sorry, yeah, there is no right for workers' rights. Uh, so this is uh, very important for the ILO. And those are the, those are the jobs that are created in, in, let's say, all sectors of the economy, or agriculture, manufacturing services, when we put in place uh, this type of uh, initiative. Improve energy and raw material efficiency, which is very much related to uh, circular economy. Limit greenhouse gas emissions, very much linked to climate change. Minimize waste and pollution. 
protect and restore ecosystems. Uh, this is about biodiversity protection, bioeconomy production, and, and, and things uh, similar to those. Support adaptation to the effects of climate change and promote a circular economy. So when we put in place all these type of initiatives and there are new jobs that are created, those are what we call green jobs. And let me only uh, remind uh, some of uh, the areas how le jobs, labor, and, and environment are linked. So the environmental challenges of the, and the world of work, how, how are, um, relate each other. First of all, we can't uh, forget that air pollution that is particularly high in, in many of the cities of our continent Reduce productivity and working hours, uh, as, as said, mainly in urban areas, but not only. Produce uh, chronic respiratory diseases, and, and, uh, and as you know, there is a greater impact of getting COVID-19 in con contaminated areas. So this is not only bad for employment, but also bad for our health, and, and of course, bad for environment. Climate change, there is a very strong link between uh, heat stress and, and, and jobs. And according to the ILO estimations that my colleagues have uh, undertaken uh, a couple of years ago, there is this number, the equivalent of 72 million uh, full-time jobs will be lost by 2030, so almost uh, 10 years time, because of the higher temperature uh, that climate change will bring us. Um, if we talk about loss of biodiversity and damage to ecosystems, we have this number, 1.2 billion jobs that depend directly on ecosystem services. Uh, the previous speaker ha has talked about the uh, forest uh, services and, and there are so many jobs in the, in the world that depend on this particular ecosystem. But we can talk about fisheries, about tourism, about industry, uh, pharmaceutical industry, for example, that depend on water and on biodiversity inputs, and all those depend directly on ecosystem services. Um, and as you all know, biodiversity losses are, have a direct impact in all these uh, jobs that depend on them. Natural disasters, something that is increasing uh, at the global level. 23 million working life years have been lost to disasters in 2000, uh, the year 2000, and the number unfortunately is growing. And something that is important to mention that might not be relevant for Canada, but it is uh, particular, very, very much relevant for Latin America and the Caribbean is that informal employment, informality, acts and, as an obstacle to comply with environmental regulation. So in many countries of the world, uh, some of the, some, I mean, workers uh, don't have a contract, don't have a, a formal relation with their employer. And, and that is, uh, we, we have seen that this is an obstacle to, to compile, uh, to, com, yeah, to, to, to put in place no, the environmental regulations. So th that was like um, an introduction about how the world of work and the environment is related. And let me now give you an introduction about how green economy, circular economy, climate change are related to this in work in, in terms of positive and negative impacts. We have uh, some positive impacts which are very, very important and, and some of the previous speakers have already referred to them. Uh, by doing things good in terms of environment, there will be new jobs created, there will be new enterprises, uh, innovation, new green products and services. We will have greater, uh, greener workplaces, as uh, the case of, um, of um, hospitals that we have heard before. And our infrastructure will be more resilient, which is, of course, good for our value chain uh, development. But uh, we can't uh, forget that uh, climate change and, and policies to address climate change and the green economy will impact jobs as well. And there will be some sectors that need to be uh, adapted, otherwise there will be job losses. And, and they will, be, in some sectors, like for example, fossil fuel, job losses will be very important. Um, there will, be, of course, climate change, for example, have very important impact on productivity. There is, uh, as already said, occupational health and safety impacts and, and the conflicts over resources are growing all over the place. Um, so what that means? That means that if we, if we take a look to green economy, circular economy measures, that will involve 
changing uh, methods of production across sector. And this is very important for some of the uh, sectors that have been already mentioned, like mining, like manufacturing, energy, transport, agriculture. All of them are, are, are going uh, ex to uh, um, experiment uh, many uh, important uh, impacts. That, and that will, those impacts will impact uh, the jobs that uh, are created in those sectors. Um, Okay, that's important for greenhouse gas emissions and for um, uh, natural resources use, which is important for circular economy and biodiversity. Um, and the, yeah, uh, we need measures. The required measures that are needed will change these industries profoundly. They need to adapt, they need to change, and those changes will bring many changes for jobs. And we are going to see now some numbers. So the ILO uh, did some uh, numbers. Uh, in that, that's a report from a year, uh, one year ago. We, we published it, and what we did was uh, was to uh, to see what could happen if the uh, the circular. I mean, if we have this scenario where the circular economy uh, increase uh, at an annual rate of five percent, so there will be five percent more plastics, glass, uh, wood pulp, metal, metals, and minerals recycled, and what uh, and, and those new recycling materials will replace replace the direct extraction of primary resources. We wanted to know what could happen uh, at employment, and you you can see the numbers at your uh, left hand side. Um, and let me go on a little bit through that. Uh, there will be a, a very important job creation. Uh, 78 million new jobs uh, will probably be created only with this 5% annual increase of recycling. Uh, but there will be as well uh, the risk of job destruction for a, a high number of, of workers, 71 million jobs. What we know out of these numbers, we know that uh, 49 or, or 49 million of those jobs will be easily reallocated. We will need some rescaling and upscaling programs to relocate within the same occupations in other uh, industries. So we we'll had these 45 million jobs uh, reallocated uh, jobs, let's say. We will have 29 million new jobs that will need new training because it will be new positions in new sectors uh, and there will be the need of, of new knowledge about that. And there will be 22 million jobs that uh, could be destroyed if workers are not uh, reskilled and, and are able to get uh, uh, all these uh, 29 new uh, green jobs that will be created. So as you can see here, the impact for the world work, it's uh, immense, it's very, very high. And, and we have to understand well, and, and this, is the, this is our point at the ILO, we need to understand well uh, what are uh, the expected impacts in, in our labor markets, otherwise it will be very difficult to address them. So here you have some numbers for sectors that will be uh, mo mainly affected by the transition to a circular economy. You have uh, the table at the left hand side uh, with the sectors uh, that will grow. Uh, everything related to recycling, reprocessing, and, and uh, repair and reuse uh, will be grow for sure. And, and you, you also have the numbers for those sectors that, that where jobs will be lost. Uh, everything related to uh, mining, to manufacturing um, will probably be uh, at risk. And, and uh, at the right hand side, you have also uh, a summary of uh, some uh, sectors that will grow. We have renewable and waste, uh, renewable energies, and waste uh, that will grow poorly, and and some of the sectors that will be, be reduced for sure. I mean, that all will depend, of course, on the policies that are put in place uh, at the at the country level, at the regional level, at the territorial level that we are talking about. I wanted to mention something related to gender because it is very important. You see here what's uh, the, the percentage of women and men that will be affected by those changes that I have mentioned. You have the light green, which is smaller in both cases, 
that those uh, those that information referred to women uh, women workers and and the the dark blue referred to men. So you see that there are um, there are more more men right now working uh, in sectors related to circular economy, and and uh, than than women and uh, and they will be. Uh, I mean, this, this gender inequality, let's say, will will be uh, will keep happen <laughs> uh, by 2030. So we, of course, need to have uh, policies to address that uh, because otherwise we will have a green economy where we will have more men than women working, and with women with less opportunities to access to all those uh, new jobs that can be created. So this is important for us. And then let me go to the main part of, of the, what the ILO does, which is uh, this issue of just transition. We have to make sure that all the changes uh, are, are not, uh, I mean, are, are beneficial for most of workers. Let's put it like that. So we need to understand what is the nature and the scale of impacts. So we need to measure, we need to diagnose, we need to assess. Uh, how a uh, circular economy can affect labor markets. We need to identify what are the sectors that will be positively and negatively affected. And why we need that? Because we need all decisions to be taken by social dialogue with workers, with employers, with governments, and with other stakeholders on the table. We can't leave any wine behind. Once we have this information, we have to go to social consensus uh, engagement with communities and local actors, of course, and tripartite social dialogue. And finally, once we have information and dialogue, we could come up with policies and measures that will make sure that social justice is the base of the transition. So we have to put in place both policies to maximize opportunities and policies to minimize and avoid, I mean, to minimize uh, negative impacts. Um, this is it is a little bit maybe confusing slide, sorry about that, but this is uh, our, our main uh, framework for the ILO. This is what we call uh, the ILO guidelines for just transition. And those guidelines have these four pillars. One is for macro policies, industrial and sector policies included. The other one is for employment policies related to enterprises, to skills and to labor markets. The third pillar is about protection, social protection and occupational health and safety to make sure that jobs are also uh, safe jobs, not only green, but also safe. And then we have the fourth pillar, which is about rights and social dialogue. We need rights at work. And we, as I said, we need dialogue to be very much participatory. And uh, this is uh, one of my final slides, skills. This is, I have already mentioned that, but let me come back again to that because this is one of the main areas of a just transition policy. We need to make sure that uh, workers have the right skills that are needed for a circular economy. And as you can see, the, the blue ones, the blue numbers, refer to a scenario of a greater circular economy. Um, and most of them are part of the medium skilled occupations. So that means that we will, I mean, we, the, the, the labor markets will need short to longer upskilling and reskilling programs. Technical and vocational education and training courses will be required. There will be some, some uh, jobs in the high skilled occupation and, and low skilled occupation as well, but most of them will be in the medium skilled occupation. So we need to put in place programs that to, to provide uh, training and certification uh, uh, for, for all these new positions that will be created. And just to finalize, uh, this is a summary of the uh, countries with Just Transition Initiative. Uh, many of them are related to energy because the energy transition is something that is happening already. Um, and in Europe, there are many and the number of, of countries is growing, Spain, France, Germany, Netherlands, Scotland in the UK, Czech Republic, Norway, and some others. The Americans, the number is growing very fast as well. Uh, climate change normally is the focus. Costa Rica, Chile, Argentina, Colombia, Canada, that already has a just transition committee uh, to address coal uh, mining impact. In Asia and Oceania, New Zealand, Austria, Philippines, China as well. And in Africa, South Africa, Ivory Coast, uh, Ghana, Nigeria, Senegal, and, and also there is a strong focus on climate change in Africa and, and green jobs creation around climate change impacts. 
Um, sorry, I said that was my final idea, my final slide, but that's the one. Some final ideas. Promoting circular economy is good for the environment and good for jobs. This is the big summary of my presentation. We can't forget that, it's good for both, but that will, uh, a circular economy will create many, uh, in many changes in labor markets and we need to identify them. What are impacts in economic sectors and within labor markets uh, um, in order to put in place those policies that are needed. A just transition approach is needed to ensure that no one is left behind. So social justice will be the basis of the change that will bring environment and social benefits. And how? Assessing new skills, um, implementing green jobs skill programs, supporting the business community, particularly small and medium enterprises. Uh, we need capacity building program for, for those uh, companies that many times don't have a very clear idea about what circular economy is, what green economy is, etc. Uh, promoting local and regional uh, circular economy value chains are very interesting because that will create local green jobs and those local green jobs uh, will will be uh, will exist uh, at the local level whatever happens so it, it can be uh, sent to a, a, another country and very importantly we need social dialogue uh, among workers and, and the representatives the labor unions and the employers organization together with governments uh, to reach uh, consensus uh, and agreements and yeah thanks for your attention and let me uh, stop sharing my the screen. Uh, great. Uh, thank you very much. Muchas gracias, uh, Anna. Uh, it's a very interesting presentation. Um, and I'm glad that we uh, highlighted some key points there. And I, I was glad that in our agenda that we ended with this topic, uh, which is a focus on labor and, and work. Because <clears throat> uh, I think it's an important piece of this whole, um, this problem problematic that we're faced with. And we've had um, the pleasure of and privilege of having uh, the great panelists share their work, you know, share the experience that they've accumulated over the years uh, in different perspectives, whether it be from uh, Aaron's uh, work on looking at the, the macro view of national policies and, and the need for looking in a broad perspective on uh, how the circular economy applies to various aspects of the natural resource sector. Uh, Dr. Boda's um, work uh, with patients and the stories that he's told about the successes and the challenges that we face with embracing uh, the circular economy and, and the threat and impacts of climate change, as well as the, the opportunities that are presented. Uh, Peter and his team at Glencore um, in an excellent presentation of the, the ground level work uh, that is occurring and the innovation in the mining sector uh, and with, uh, with the operations, various aspects of Glencore's uh, operation. Uh, John Gunn, Dr. John Gunn and his team at uh, Laurentian University. I mean, innovation takes work and it takes effort. And, and lastly, uh, uh, Annabelle and Sanchez, uh, with the work of understanding uh, the global labor economy and the transitions. And so it's this transition of work is, is not just about, um, it's not just about shifting people from one vocation to another, but we have to ensure that what the dynamics of this transition will be and to ensure that it's a green and just transition. So, uh, um, you know, the, the, the whole notion of work is what we, we wanna talk about next and, and in Canada. So we are a nation of work, a nation of workers uh, who have uh, forged a nation uh, out of a very rough place and a big place. So we're used to this and I believe we're ready for the challenge in all the different sectors. We have participants from the Alberta oil and gas sector on this, uh, on this call as well in this symposium. So it's not just about uh, Northern Ontario, though this is our focus. Um, but uh, as a prof, uh, I always say to my students, I said one of the uh, one of the joys actually of my job is to help people find their purpose, you know, their their vocation and their work. And there's no greater uh, joy than finding what your meaning is. And often that's executed through work, whether it be in your community, with your family, or in your professional uh, activities. So I would like to now introduce. Um, uh, Charles, Charles Sertwell, uh, to talk a bit more about that, to give some concluding remarks, and also talk about the work uh, that we need to do next uh, to take some of the ideas we've heard about today uh, into a further step in reality in Northern Ontario. So I'd like to pass the floor to Charles. Uh, Charles, the floor is yours. 